Hello, this is your boy Nathan here, and you're watching Robot Masters. So, first off, let's just start with you guys. I just want to appreciate everyone that's watched my videos, that comment, subscribed, liked, even gave a thumbs down. Uh, I enjoy all the engagement, and I'm enjoying doing these YouTube videos for you. Um, so in front of me, I have this S9 self emptying bin all torn apart for you guys. And I felt like I want to show you all the components. So in this video, I'm going to go over three things. First, I'm going to briefly talk about what's the purpose of this self emptying bin and its functions. Secondly, I'll go over the main components. And lastly, I'll show you how to build this self emptying bin. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get going. The main purpose of the self emptying bin is two main things. One, it charges the Roomba. And secondly, it empties out the dustbin. So how does this work? Well, let's talk about the actual emptying out the dustbin part. Uh, first, you need a vacuum motor. Here's the motor. I'm going to go ahead and get up close for you guys. Oh, you guys see that nameplate right there? Um, this is just a brushless motor. Let's see if you guys can get a good look inside there. And again, can you see the... Uh, copper wiring and uh, you might be able to see the magnets down there Now next part of this motor is the fan housing unit So inside is a few fan blades and that's what creates the suction Just give you guys a quick look at the motor here The robot docks on here, pulls the debris through this hole, and it goes up along this tube and into this part right here. So here's where the tube is, and this is if you look inside there, this is where your uh, bag will sit right there. And the vacuum motor sits down in there. Now, <clears throat> you see this wire hanging out? This is actually a sensor wire. There's a physical mechanical switch, which is down in there. I'll highlight it for you guys. And this physical mechanical switch detects if the bag is inserted or not. You see this mechanical lever? This one does not have a physical switch. Once the lid's closed, pushes it in, and help seal up the bag. Okay. So this is probably one of the most important parts. This is the filter that prevents debris and particles to get down into your uh, vacuum motor. If this ever needs replacing, it's pretty easy. Just kind of pull up on it. All right, let's get to the actual motherboard. So this is the controller for everything. It, it provides the charging of the robot. It provides the infrared sensors. So here's the emitters right here. Let's see if you can see that. Can you guys see in there? Yep, you can see the little infrared emitters. And this is the receiver, or what people call the Archon sensor, which allows the robot to dock. And these are your connections up here. So let's see if I can get you guys up close. Give you guys a really good look at this guy. Maybe you guys want to see what this says. And let's look on the back here. So one thing to know is, you guys know what this does? Well, this is a uh, pressure sensor. So this part tells the circuit board if there's pressure or not. So if let's say you try to self empty the bin and the lid's open, it will say loss in uh, pressure. So this is the 
backing. You recognize this part? So here's where you wrap up your power cable. And look at this, guys. This is a little thing that iRobot does to update its firmware. You can actually change the firmware using this proprietary connection port. There's also one on the Roombas as well. And I believe the ones on the Roombas have like a little black cap. So this is your motor housing. And there's also like a little rubber, uh, it kind of looks like a little shim. So this kind of sits on the motor part. And then again, you got another serial number here. So did you remember those infrared sensors I showed you? This is where it, it sits, it's right here. This is kind of like the window or the eye. And then this is where the dirt gets sucked in and these are the two charging contacts. And then up here is you got a little LED light. Okay, so this wire controls the little LED light. It can, it's multicolored. It could be white or red. And this is just some uh, foam insulation. And then down here is the wire for the charging contacts. So here's underneath. So if you ever have a clog, this is the protective cover. All you have to do is remove these screws around here and you can unclog it. You'll just take this piece and it can just kind of it's right in there. Okay. Okay, so that's basically a quick overview of the major components and what they look like. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start getting this guy built and you guys can watch me. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is grab your circuit board and you may notice for little hole, screw holes here. What this does is this will screw in the Archon sensors. Next. Gonna take this. You guys see that? And it's gonna go in here. And we're gonna use some silver screws for this guy. So what I usually do is you just put one in just to hold the sickle board and what you can start doing is plugging in the wires. Let me go ahead and plug in this guy. And you can only go one way. And just make sure it's pressed down in there. Pretty simple. Now, what's nice about this guy is if you ever have to replace your power cable, it's real simple. You can just unplug it from these two quick connect connectors. Now let's go ahead and plug in our contact wires that charges the robot. It just goes up inside there and snaps in. All complete. Okay, so the next part is we're gonna put in the rubber stopper or housing. I don't know what they call this down in here. So okay. notice the little notches. Line up in those two notches there. So I'm just trying to line her up there. There you go. Can I see that? I take our motor and you see this little hole here? We have to route the power wires through this hole. Okay, so I got the wires started and just keep going. 
So the whole thing's in there. Motor is installed in its casing. I have the little rubber here and the wires are routed through the hole. Next, we're going to take our little rubber kind of insulator and install it over. There we go. Now it keeps the motor nice and secure. We're going to put this plate on the back of this motor. Um, you notice that these bumps here, this actually goes away from the motor. That's how you know what orientation the plate's on. And you see this little indentation? That's where the motor wires go through. So it kind of slots in like this. See that? Okay, so now I just have to screw that in. And just make sure this is kind of flush and nicely seated. See that? See how it's nice and flush now? That's very important. It has to be flush or it's not going to go in properly. Okay, so once we have the motor assembly done, we're going to place it on here. Keep in mind, hold the motor down or it will fall out. There's nothing holding the motor inside its uh, casing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, grab some screws. And I'll give you guys a quick look of how, see that? Just kind of slots in there. One thing to know is to find the orientation, just make sure this matches on with this, because this is where the hose goes. Okay, pretty solid. So we mounted the motor onto the top part of the unit. And now the, here comes the tricky part. So what we're gonna end up doing is we have to slide this piece, this little edge here, down in here. And we also have to route this tubing in this hole right here. Hole right there, that's where the tubing goes. Okay, once we have the tubing, just kind of slide it down. It should just slot right in. Okay, see how the tubing's kind of pinched? Just kind of gently pull up on it. Okay, so it looks like it's slotted in there. So I'm gonna connect the sensor wire right here. It's just kind of lift up a little bit. Give you guys, give yourself a little space. There we go. Yeah, unfortunately they don't give you a lot of wire to work with, so it's a little tricky there. Okay, so you may notice there's a little piece of plastic housing down there. That's where the hose goes. Just gonna push it up in there. Okay. Should just kind of slide in there. Next, we wanna do is take our motor power wires and just plug them in right here. So just take care of the polarity. Um, plus is plus, minus is minus. If you have it backwards, instead of having the thing vacuum, it's gonna actually blow. And that won't be a good thing. Okay. We are moving right along.
So you notice that there was a gold trim here when you bought it. Uh, on the i7, it's black. But what you do is you remove this, like, it's kind of like a sticker. See that, guys? It's just kind of like a little sticker that covers up four screws. Let's go ahead and uh, rotate it back. So the next part is we're going to install the base plate. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take out base plate and we're going to hook up the power adapter cord right there. Just kind of sits there. Just kind of keep it there for now so it's out of the way. Next, we're going to just kind of move this in position. And this should go in over this housing here. A little tricky to try to make sure it gets in there. There you go. Just make sure that this rubber gasket is completely sealed around here. So you can get seen. And you got your little power adapter right there. Or oh, where's this power connection right here? Okay. So that was fairly easy, right? Just a few more parts and we should be good to go. So, what I was doing is I was just kind of adjusting and making sure this guy's flush. Should seat nice and flush. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take our backing here. And we're going to plug in the fancy uh, I've robots communication port. Next, we're going to take a little power thing and hook it up. That kind of slot in, okay? So, start with the bottom in first and kind of wiggle it through. Just kind of slot in. And then get your top part. And if uh, anything is catching, just double check to make sure everything is kind of lined up and there's nothing pinching. Okay, so there we go. Let's get some uh, screws in there. Next thing we can put on is this guy, just back covering, and it also serves to help loop out your uh, power cable. Uh, well, unfortunately, the trim has a one-time use glue, so you can take a little uh, you can either use super glue, maybe Elmer's or something to just kind of put this back on. There we go. Got a little edging in there. Next part. Just take out protective covering. See that guys? Just kind of slots in there.
What do you guys think? Looks good new, right? Now we've got the fun part, a billion screws to put in. All right, so last part is just installing this unit. Okay, looks like we're all done here. Except for one very, very important thing. So if you see that guys, if you don't install this filter, you will damage this motor. There you go. All done. Okay, how was that guys? Now, the real question is, does it turn on? So, if you like this video, please smash the like button. It helps me gauge if this video is popular enough. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan. I do a lot of crazy reviews, unboxings, overviews, teardowns, tear-ups. You name it, I do everything with cool robot bathrooms daily. So, be safe out there, and I'll see you next time.